Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is February the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, today we're going to be looking at a passage out of Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to begin in verse 5. So if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 8, and let's begin together in verse 5. Now, I trust that you are doing well, that you are feeling blessed in Jesus, and I trust that you are growing day by day in the knowledge of his person and in the knowledge of his word. Well, let's begin together, Matthew chapter 8, and let's begin at verse 5. Now it says, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now a centurion was a member of the Roman guard. This was not a Jew. And yet the testimony of Jesus is spreading throughout the whole land. And so this centurion hears of Jesus and he turns to Jesus in his time of need. And so he says unto the Lord in verse six, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. Now, a servant would be one that would be almost a family member. He has served the family for some time. He lives in the house among them. And so there was a very close bond, a tight-knit relationship that developed between the servant and his master. And so this master comes into Jesus and he says, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, which is almost like being paralyzed. And he says that he is grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And notice this, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you would come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And I say to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to all those that were following him, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not in all of Israel, not among all the Jewish people. Here is a pagan, a Roman centurion, and he speaks greater words of faith than all of you even your Jewish leaders, even your rabbis, even your Pharisees, your Sadducees, the Sanhedrins, the high priest, this pagan Roman soldier has spoken great words of faith. Well, let's take a look at what he said. First of all, he said, I am not worthy. You see, he understood that there was nothing in him that could meet his need. He had to look outside himself. And although he had only heard of the things that Jesus was doing, he believed because of what he had heard. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word, by the testimony of God. And oftentimes that testimony is told from other followers. And so you and I should be fervent and faithful in proclaiming the good works of God and what he offers unto men, men who will surrender, men who will believe. So he says, I am not worthy. I know that I am a sinner. I know that you are a righteous man. And there's nothing in me that deserves your time or your attention. But if you'll only speak the word right now where you stand, I know when I return home, my servant will be healed. And notice this in verse 9, because this is where the true understanding of who Jesus is, is exemplified. He says, I am a man under authority. Well, Jesus too is under authority. He's under the authority of the Father. Yet even though he is under authority, he still reigns as king over his kingdom. And so his word is final. His word is true. And all those who serve under him respond to his word with immediate action. And that's what this man says. He says, yes, I am a centurion and I have those under me that serve. And so when I speak, they listen. 
They immediately obey. They don't second guess. They don't question. They don't delay, but they act immediately upon my word, even to the smallest degree. And Jesus, upon hearing this, marveled because this centurion understood the spiritual kingship of Jesus, that all the angels of heaven live only to serve him, that he alone has been exalted and every knee, every tongue bows and confesses that he truly is Lord. And Jesus says, even among all the sacrifices, even among all the festival days that are observed and honored by the Jewish people, I have not found so great a faith. But notice, friend, it all started with the statement, I am not worthy. And among all the tragic things that are taking place within the charismatic movement today, within the mega churches, and there are many, and I have pointed those out in the past, and we have other videos that speak to those things. But the most tragic thing about these teachings is that somehow they feel that they are deserving. They feel that they are worthy. They feel as if they have earned God's good favor and blessing. They almost act as if God owes them something. They say, I've planted my seed of faith. Now God owes me something in return. And yet in our passage today, we see that the only value we have is found in and through Jesus Christ. There is no good in us. If God were to remove his spirit from us for one single day, we would become the most vile creatures that this earth has ever known. And the only good in us is what he has placed within us. And so he deserves all the attention. He alone deserves all the glory, all the honor. And we should be left saying, I am not worthy. God be merciful to me, a sinner. And what a difference that is in the way that we see ourselves. And that's truly where the difference lies, in our perception of ourselves. And if we truly see ourselves as humble servants, not mighty warriors marching and tearing across the battlefield, if we bow low before him, and ask that he would act on our behalf rather than taking the authority upon ourselves and rebuking devils. Michael the archangel in the book of Jude wouldn't even put himself in a position as that. If we could truly bring ourselves to seeing ourselves as absolutely unworthy and dependent in all things upon him, friends, great and mighty would be the things that he would do for us. But we are limited by spiritual pride, by thinking too highly of ourselves, by thinking that there is something within us that if we say a certain phrase, he is under obligation to act on our behalf. Friends, this is not true. It's all about the position of our heart. And so my prayer for you today is that as the centurion, you will come before the Lord Jesus with a true heart attitude that says, I am not worthy. There is nothing that I can say. There is nothing that I can do, Lord, that obligates you to act on my behalf. You know my need, and I pray that your will be done. But if in your mercy you could grant my request, I ask it of you my master and my king. And regardless of the answer, regardless of how you respond, you will remain my master and my king. And I will remain bowed low before you, seeking to be even more humble in my service, in my commitment, in my devotion. Oh, friends, can you see the subtle line that divides spiritual pride and arrogancy from spiritual humility and spiritual abasement. It is a subtle line, almost invisible line. But when you see it, it will become so profoundly visible that it will alter the course of your journey forever. 
It will change, radically change your relationship with the Lord Jesus. And it will position you in a place of blessing that you never knew existed. Spiritual blessing, rivers of living water. As his spirit takes possession of you, as you see him, your great God and King, with new light and new understanding. Hallelujah, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're with us this morning. I pray that this passage has spoken to you in a simple yet direct way. I pray that the Holy Spirit will enlighten you to these truths. I pray that you'll taste of this heavenly gift and that your life will never be the same. Well, I love you, friends. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.